almost exactly a year after we visited for the first time, it was Orphan Sunday at High Ridge. So we walk into church on this Sunday and and I kind of felt like God was lining things up a little bit, so I got a little nervous. As, um, as we were coming in, finding our seats, I, I, I got the handout and, and checked it out real quick and saw it was an Orphan Sunday and was just like, oh, oh boy, here we go. Wife will be crying by the end of the, of the service. Um, service is over and everybody's moving around and um, kind of look at her and she's just kind of smiling and not saying anything. <laughs> and I go, would you like to go up? up front and pray about uh, adoption and she goes I'll follow you (laughs) so I'm like okay come on things just um, lined up um, with opportunities to go to Gladney and check out their services and opportunities to talk to other people that had adopted and I kept imagining we'd have to do all this research and like figure all the details out and make all these big decisions and it wasn't that way at all. I mean, there was just people to help and people to answer questions. And I really felt, you know, looking back on that, that's all God wanted me. He just said, you said yes today. Now I just need you to say yes to Monday. Take one more step. Don't worry <laughs> what you're going to do 12 months from now. But uh, just take that Monday night step. And that was one of the times, one of the many times in our lives when God allowed us to balance one another because he was just looking at the very next baby step and he was really calm because of that. Whereas my mind was already racing to all the questions and I was kind of freaking out. And so we balanced each other because yeah. he kept pulling me back and saying, one step, babe, just one step, one step, babe. So I was thinking, um, I, we don't have money. I mean, how we don't have money saved up to adopt children. This costs thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Like, how are we going to do this? We don't have the money. And then, and then, uh, you know, the selfish part of me, the total flesh, was like, we'll never have another date night of our lives. If we have four or five kids, like, <laughs> we'll never get a date night again in our entire life. We're, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? You know? And he just kept saying, one step, babe, one step. Don't know the answer to that. And so we got there and and it was a really nice turnout and um, they had people from Gladney and people from Safe Families and everybody there just sharing the information and answering questions and kind of educating us about the ministry that High Ridge wants to offer um, to walk beside families that are um, stepping into this commitment. And so first um, Amanda stood up actually and shared more about High Ridge's ministry. And one of the things she mentioned was that they were hoping to um, have the opportunity to offer a parent's night out where all of the children can come and stay at the church so that mom and dad could have a dinner out, just the two of them. And I kind of sunk in my seat like, oh, of course they already have that covered, you know? (laughs) And she shared that, um, that when you adopt from within the United States, there's actually very little cost and there's actually a lot of support and help. And if you adopt outside of the country, it is much more expensive. But there again, there's many avenues for financial support and help. It's never a burden just for the family to bear. I really felt prepared, you know, um, walking in the whole thing. Uh, you know, I had no idea how this adoption thing even works, you know, but um, glad me really came along and is continuing to come along beside us and really be our advocates and prepare us um, um, for, for what, we're, what we're getting ready to go through and whatnot. And it was, it was really good. We had um, decided in that we were not adopting one child, but that we were adopting two children and that we were looking for a sibling group of boys. And so we were looking for um, mm-hmm. two boys that were biologically brothers. Some of our families and friends have also shared their concerns with us. And, they're absolutely valid and don't have answers for them. Um, we do have a peace, so we're able to move beyond beyond the concerns. Um, but some of the moments of clarity that I, that I do have is um, a picture of the boys and the life change that they're going to experience. You know, go from the, the fatherless to having a family and a father. Um, sure, it's going to be tough on us and it's going to be a change, but. Look at, look at the great the greatness and the benefit that the boys will experience. And um, I don't know who they are, but I do know when I do meet them and they do become a part of the family, they will be just as close as, as my daughters. And so this anticipation, this, this um, I'm ready, Lord, I'm ready, my heart's ready, aching for, um, for these boys. In September, we went to San Antonio for our first 
match event and uh, it was the first opportunity for us to really be proactive in trying to find the boys that would become a part of our family and this was an opportunity for us to really go out and find them so the very last table that we walked up to there was a picture of um, our boys and uh, we were looking for two little boys, that's what we had been approved for, and there was actually three little boys in this picture, but it just set in me right away, we needed to know more about these little boys. And all through this process, as we are taking this step into, into really trusting the Lord, we, we had a peace in, in, in a lot of these decisions, but they were kind of not planned out decisions, and, and meeting the boys for the first time down, down in San Antonio was definitely not a planned, well thought out thing, but we really felt called and, and led by the Lord to go do this and go see them in um, November 14, 2014, when we first got to bring the boys home as well as in Christmas um, that year. Um, you know, there, it, was, it was overwhelming. It was, a, it was a shock to the home, shock to us. Um, it's exhausting. Those first couple nights, um, you know, I'd, I would shut down um, just uh, emotionally and I'd have to check out and um, <laughs> I'd, I'd go to the closet and, and pray um, with true, true doubt and true questioning of the Lord of, I, I know you called me to this, I know you called this. And I would, I would rehearse those, um, those times that he spoke to us and be like, I'm here. Why is this so hard? Why is this hurt? Um, why did you do this? Why are you asking me to do this? And it just, it hurt. I mean, it, it was tearful and painful. And God was really good to always balances. give one of us the strength when the other one was at their wits end. Because uh, it was hard. I mean, if you think, you know, think back to a newborn baby and you're trying to get to know that newborn baby, you don't know each other yet. You don't know how to read one another's needs or communication styles. And it was the same thing. All of a sudden, we had three new boys in our home that we didn't know. We didn't know what made them tick. We didn't know what what scared them or what they loved or what they didn't like. I mean, even dinner time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was one of the hardest times of the day. Yeah. And in January, there was a pause in the whole process that kind of really shocked everybody um, of, of pausing. And as Candy said, we, we thought it was going to be right at Christmas or right at Christmas for finalization. But during that time of pause, um, just in, in, in constant study and prayer, we really submitted to the Lord and, and sought for him, sought His His guidance in that. And but then in March was when we finally got a phone call yes. that uh, they had made a decision and they were actually going to separate the boys. And so um, instead of there being three boys that were up for adoption that had been with us, now we could only bring two of them home. That, that was one place that really broke my heart because we had prepared the room for, for three boys. And now we're, we, we were being told that we would only be bringing two of them home. We just had to trust, and and you know, hindsight 2020, we know God gave us exactly what we needed, and and is providing for the boys in exactly the way they need to be provided for for their best interest. But that was hard. That was really hard. And so we got that phone call in March, and then in May, we got to bring, bring them home. home permanently. Yeah. Six months later was when we got to go to court, and the boys got to take our name, and uh, the state stopped visiting, and we got to just move forward um, as a new as, formed as family. A, as a new family of seven. Yeah. Throughout the whole process, it was uh, it was this balance between um, of no control, unknown, you know, walking in faith. I would really say true walking in faith. To okay, I got a little bit of control. I got a little bit of decision making. Yeah and then having to let go again, mm -hmm. and then getting control again, getting decision making, okay, I know what it's gonna look like, so and then it dissolves in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the homework projects at the school in kindergarten, um, the kids were writing things for their parents, and uh, the teacher had prompted some of the sentences that they should write on their, on their homework paper to their parents, and um, you know, I, I love you mommy, I love you daddy, um, hugs, hugs and, and kisses. kisses, and then at the very bottom, it. Um, Nicholas. Yeah. What? What? It? Nicholas wrote. Keep, keep me. Keep me. Exclamation point. So, this was the little note that he brought home, and just last month. Yeah. Um, February 2016, and so it says, "Dear Mom and Dad, kisses, hugs, special." Keep me! Exclamation point. And that was really like we both went, wow. Because uh, in our minds, it was forever from even before the day they came home. But that was really like, oh my gosh, 
it still crosses their minds that yeah. this might not be forever. Looking back, reflecting upon it um, during that time of, um, of actually uh, seeking out the ch seeking out the boys, and then through the process of waiting, and then actually getting them, I, I turn around and I look, and um, <laughs> it's scary. It's like, oh my gosh, Lord, I just walked through a minefield where there were so many different paths that could have been taken, and that were not good. You led me through the perfect path. It wasn't easy at all, but there's a certain peace that you just can't yeah. come by yeah. anywhere other than being right in line with God and where He's leading you. And, and yeah. we just hung to that peace during those, you know, battle times or times of uncertainty. Just you just cling to that peace that He's got you. Looking back now, uh, all the way back to October of. 2013 13. when we felt the call to adopt uh, and knowing now that that journey uh, lasted all the way until November, November of 2015, 2015 when we were able to finalize the adoption yeah. it was quite a journey a two-year journey yes. uh, lasted a lot longer than we ever anticipated and uh, worth every step because we now have our boys home and we have grown in our faith and our relationship with Christ in a way that I wouldn't give back for a million dollars, uh, but quite a journey it was and so unexpected. And, and that's one piece of advice that I would give to anybody that's considering adoption or feeling called to adoption is, you know, keep your expectations down. Don't, don't get your heart set too early on anything because it's very unpredictable and you have to just cling to your faith and trust that God's going to guide you each step of the way because you never know what the next step will be or how long it will take. As Aaron says, the Lord has broken our hearts for that community now and for those children. And it's exciting to be on the other side and be able to support other families as they feel called. It's exciting to see all the ways to support orphans and adoption ministry, whether it's bringing children into your home or supporting the other families that are bringing the children into their home, uh, interim care for families. There's so many ways and, and for, you know, before our journey, I felt like either you, you adopt or you don't. I had no idea all of the ways that you can be a part of the, the ministry of adoption and fostering. And so it's exciting to be really embedded into that community now and supporting other families. I look forward to what the future holds with the boys. I mean, you know, we daydream about our girls and who they're becoming, and now, now we get to daydream about the boys and who they're becoming. And, and I do anticipate the days that the questions will come uh, about their biological parents and, and where they came from and all of the whys. And, and in some ways that makes me nervous, but in other ways I look forward to, to those bonding moments with the boys and continuing to help them grow and know who they are and why God put them in our family and, and, and who God is calling them to be. I'm excited about that.